You're listening to Real Conversations, where every week we take a peek at the favorite movies of fascinating people. Real Conversations is hosted by Brian Coley, the founder of Art Within and Real. Today on this show, Brian sits down with Annie Downs. Annie is an author and blogger based in Nashville, Tennessee. She's a fan of bands with banjos, glitter, boiled peanuts, football games, and her community of friends. She just released a book called Looking for Lovely, which you can learn more about at AnnieFDowns.com. All right, so we have Annie F. Downs in (laughs) the real studios today. Uh, Explain why the F, because people will want to know. Right, right? isn't that funny? So it actually is my middle initial, for starters. We didn't just plug it in. But there's, just like with any of us, there's multiple people with our names. I happen to share Annie Downs with an Australian quilter who is massively famous. Mm. And so we try to add the F as much as we can (laughs) so that when people are looking on the internet, they don't think that I... Make puppy dog patterns for your right. newest quilt you're making, which is a new pattern that I've just been tagged in lately on the internet. It's oh, been really? great, but wow. yeah. So okay. I try to be Annie F. Downs just to help people separate. All right. So Annie F. Downs, <laughs> right. tell us. We dive right in on this. So okay. uh, tell us what's on your top 10. Well, you know, my concern is that my top 10 isn't very classy. <laughs> okay. And it isn't very No like... judgment. No judgment. <laughs> okay. All right. But I was honest. I just yes. was honest. Good. I only left one off, as I told you. I left one off that I regret. But here are my top 10. Julie and Julia. Ah, yes. Dead Poet Society. Mm, okay. You've Got Mail. Yeah. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins, all right, yeah. Tommy Boy. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's Notting Tommy. Hill. Okay, yeah. Shakespeare in Love. All right. My only rated R, I believe, just for oh. my mom to note, my yeah. only rated R. <laughs> Saving Mr. Banks. Yeah. Baby Mama. Mary Poppins. Yeah, Mary Poppins two theme, is right? what you got in there. I know, isn't yep. that weird? Mm-hmm. Baby Mama and the new Pride and Prejudice. With Kira Knightley. Knightley. Yeah. yeah. Very good. All right. So let's just dive right in. Okay. And you tell me, what, the first question we usually ask is like, which character do you identify with most? Who do I identify with the most? Yeah. Um, Julia Childs, I think. Oh, really? Like, yeah. Like Meryl Streep, Julia Childs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Meryl Streep. And her, because it, it, that movie came out, and I never read the book. That movie came out before my first book came out. Before the publishing, maybe even before the publishing had even started on my first book. And watching her progress through Mm -hmm. writing a book and writing her cookbook. And meanwhile, watching someone respond to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. um, I mean, I I could get Teary telling you about it now. But at the end, the first time she holds her book. Yeah. And I think that's a very similar feeling I had when say, with Saving Mr. Banks at the end, where she sees the movie yeah, for yeah, the yeah. first time, and she's wa- and so both of those characters, I relate to P.L. Travers and Julia Childs in the movie. I relate to as an author, I think. Yeah. And so they both are just kind of like, I watch these other women live these dreams that I have. Yeah. And. And watch them feel some of the things I've already felt. Yeah. And then feel things I haven't gotten to feel yet. And it just, I mean, at the end of Julie and Julia, Brian, my, we were, there were probably 10 of us that saw it together and they had to leave me. I was <laughs> weeping. You were just I mean, oh, I was undone. Because the, the last scene is her like holding the book. She's just unwrapped it. Yeah. The first copy she's ever got. And I, yeah, I was a puddle. It was bad. Oh, I mean, gosh. my friends were like, my friend Sonny said like, we're just going to go out there. You yeah. just finish. And I was the last person in theater bawling, crying. Yeah. Is it something about uh, the completion of it, or is it more the embracing of it? Yeah, it was the completion of it. Okay. It's seeing it all the way to the end. Yeah. It's it's that bound mm-hmm, thing mm-hmm. that yeah. kind of is, yeah. is out there now. Yeah, and yeah. the process in Saving Mr. Banks was very similar, mm-hmm. where they work through this movie so long, mm-hmm. and she's she cares so much deeply about the characters and there's so much that people don't know about what she's written yeah that makes her care deeper and and then at the end when she's watching it and just bawling at how mr banks is treated i mean the whole thing was just oh yeah so moving for me is it uh you know one of the things i struggle with as a kind of both and situation is process and product like Mm -hmm. I I love process so much but if you leave me in process for too long I get really kind of angry because I don't have a product that's <laughs> right. out there. Yeah. And then if I'm in product world, I go, no, I just want to be with people and mm-hmm. kind of just, you know, really just live the process, which mm-hmm. which for you is more enjoyable. Yeah, I think 
well, this is probably true for a lot of people, but the start of the process mm-hmm. and the product, <laughs> yeah. right? They're like the dreaming in the Beginning first week, end. right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm a big believer in product. Mm-hmm. I think, I think we were created to create. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't finish what you start, yeah. you're missing out on some of the creation process that we were built for. Yeah. You know, it's, there's a book called Garden City uh-huh. by John Mark Comer. And his whole question is, why did the Bible start in a garden but ends in a city? Why didn't God take mm. it back to a garden? Wow. Which is fascinating, yeah. right? What's the answer? The answer is because we were always meant to build. We were always meant to, to take natural else. resources yeah. in, inside of us and in the world yeah. and take those natural resources and make something better. Wow. And so God always intended for us to make a garden city, right? Like a city Strong. that is full of life, that yeah. gives life. Yeah. That's why even when we travel, you've probably felt mm-hmm. this too, there are cities that feel really dark, mm-hmm. cities that feel like, yeah, that, that what they are building is death. Yeah. And there are cities that you go like, this is a tiny town, but it is thriving yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's a garden city, yeah. right? And so I think, so that's why I love the product too, because I think we were always made to for the finished product. That's we awesome. were made to process, but we weren't made to give up before we were done. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. So uh, I obviously noticed a theme of books in your top 10. Yeah, really? So you got, um, <clears throat> you got male bookstore owner. Yeah. Right? Uh, oh my who, gosh, in Notting Hill, that's right. She's a, he's a <gasps> Meg Ryan owner. is a bookstore owner in, right? oh my gosh, <laughs> Dead Poet Society. He's a literature teacher. Right? Shakespeare. Shakespeare. <gasps> <gasps> wow. Okay, so a whole lot of, uh, and then of course Pride and Prejudice is like an icon of right. literature, right? So tell that's me about. That's really interesting. Yeah, tell me about education, books. You know, a lot of these are teachers, inspirational mm-hmm. figures. Mm-hmm. You've got. You know, uh, Robin Williams' char- character in Dead Poet Society mm-hmm. as a teacher. You Did you make- love him in that? Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah He's yeah. just so... We all want to be that, right? Right. Yeah, Inspire everyone wants to be that, like that teacher. Yeah, 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 exactly. Rip the pages out of your book mm-hmm, kind mm-hmm. of thing. And then you got Mary Poppins floating in as the inspirational kind of teacher there, right? Yeah. Um, so tell me about... I know that That's you... so interesting. Uh, that was your major, right? Was yeah. Education. Yeah, I taught early childhood. And That's why I majored in it, University of Georgia, go dogs. And then I taught... Five years. I did two years of fifth grade and three years of fourth grade. Yeah. So that really is a theme. That's, I mean, that is so funny because I thought so long yeah. about what are the themes you're going to pull out, and I did not Didn't come up with that one, one, which is ridiculous. That's why you're the pro. No, it's um, good. It's good. So tell me about, I know that part of your journey was kind of going away from education mm-hmm, and going mm-hmm. into being the inspirational leader, right? Well, the truth is I only have one skill set. Mm-hmm. I just entertain people long enough that they learn something. That's all I can do. That's, That's all I did awesome. when I taught school. That's yeah. all I do in my books. That's all yeah. I do when I'm speaking on stage is I just yeah. bring enough story and entertainment yeah. that they hope, hopefully walk away knowing something they didn't know. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so that's probably why Mary Poppins and Dead Poet Society are on there. Yeah. Because yeah. that's both. And Mary Poppins just entertained them to clean a room yeah. so that they got the result that they that's needed. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And so that's probably – that really is like when I work with my team that I work with, when I am – telling someone about my business, about my company, that is really, I go, listen, this is what I'm good at. Yeah. I, we need to pay people to do everything else Yeah. because the only thing I'm good at, really good at, I'm, I can handle other things, yeah. but I'm really good at entertaining people long enough that they learn something. That's really cool. And you, you just totally see that. And, and even with Julia and Julia, you see the fact that here is a passing down of that same inspirational teaching mm-hmm. to this other, the other character, yeah. you know, who is um, in the film, the Amy Adams character. So tell me about, uh, like, a lot of these people who are bookshop owners, you know, the Meg Ryan character yeah. and um, Hugh Grant character in Notting Hill, they're, they're kind of being taken out of business, or, right. or not maybe for her it is. And then for him, it's more of he feels like he's, he doesn't have any kind of mm-hmm. right to be dating this huge star in mm-hmm. Julia Roberts, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so there seems to be this this idea of, well, it's the bookshop owner and they're kind of the little man on mm-hmm. the totem pole. And then yet there's a big star, these big kind of big people who come in. Yeah. Like, you know, the Tom Hanks character owns right. the big store, right? You're right. And she's the big star. Did people right? tie those two together when they came out, I wonder? Because they weren't they aren't that far mm. different in age. That's interesting. I wonder, yeah, because yeah, that's really interesting that there's yeah. the big star and the yeah. Fox books and the – movie star of Julia Roberts and then there's the travel bookshop and the yeah. shop around the corner and I ha- they, they, I'd have to look up the dates but they have to be pretty close to each mm-hmm, other mm-hmm. for sure so tell me about that is there any kind of being that your life has been a transition from mm-hmm. <clears throat> did you ever feel like being the teacher was the small bookshop owner 
and then now you're kind of the Julia Roberts character. Well, I think I'm the shop around the corner. Still, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. I just think I'm not. Um, I and I and I and I maybe even like that. Yeah. I maybe even like this idea that that I'm the I'm the every girl. Yeah. I'm the like I'm I'm. I didn't come from a line of literature royalty. Yeah. Right. And I don't have this amazing degree. Yeah. And I don't have a Fox Books backing me, right? Like I have a great family, but they are CPAs, right? right so right. they just make sure I don't go bankrupt um, <laughs> and get in trouble with that. Right. That's right. So I think there are some of that. Um, I connect with some of those characters in the sense that it is okay to go after your dream, even if your dream isn't huge. Yeah. Though I do have really big dreams now. I yeah. think when I fell in love with these movies, yeah. I felt very normal and like my life was going to look very normal forever. Yeah. And my life doesn't look normal at all anymore. But when I fell in love with them, they feel very simple. They feel like yeah. simple lives. And, yeah. and I, that, that is something that stood out to me about a lot of these movies is it's just people being people. Mm-hmm. I don't have mm-hmm. aliens. I don't have wars. <laughs> I don't have... Superheroes. You know, yeah, yeah. I don't have superheroes. Fantasy, yeah. I don't have any of that. Mm-hmm. I don't even have, um, oh, like Lord, of the, Lord of the Rings. That's what I'm trying like to think that, of. Yeah. yeah, I don't have any of that. It's just people being people. Yeah, that's good. And I think that's what I really – that those are the movies I always want to go mm-hmm. see. Not even necessarily rom-coms, but I just want to see – that I do clearly like them. I, I just want to see people being people Yeah. And what, that, and what that looks like. So probably I connect – part of my – Pre two thousand eight heart connects with mm-hmm. Meg Ryan and my two thousand sixteen heart connects with Julia Roberts. Yeah. Of going like, what does it look like now that sometimes people I hope I can say this, this is true. What does it look like now that sometimes people know me and I don't know them? Yeah. And what does it look like and when not just for quilting. Right. And not just not just for quilting, for <laughs> other things as well. Yeah. But yeah, because because that's a tension I have to deal with mm-hmm. in my life too. So maybe I like them because I've I'm all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Just the amalgamation, which is what these what these characters end on, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they come together and understand their... And, and that's something that I see totally in your top ten is with Baby Mama, Tommy Boy, uh, you know, Notting <laughs> That are Hill. so funny, right? Yeah, they're very Baby funny. Baby Mama and Tommy Boy are so funny. <laughs> totally funny, right? Um, but they're pairs of people yeah, who are kind of... It's typical kind of buddy films. Oh, right. Where they're very different from each other. In fact, they almost hate each other at the beginning. And are they're so... You know, with Notting Hill... And Shakespeare in Love. These are people who are, you know, not in the same ballpark, right? You know, they're. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so a lot. They're of almost these... all pairs, mm-hmm. except Mary Poppins and Dead Poet Society. So eight of my ten is pairs. Exactly. Even <gasps> on the posters, they're pairs, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you have these people who are very disparate in uh-huh. some way, uh-huh. right? And yet they find they end up buddies or they yeah. end up loves right. at the end, right? Um, and it's part of the journey, and, and there's a, I love the fact that you have Pride and Prejudice because usually the character starts with some sort of prejudice, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it starts with, uh, you know, um, P.T. Travers being very prejudiced against uh, Walt right, Disney, Disney yeah. right? And uh, so tell me about that. Tell me, it sounds like because you've chosen movies that are, are just life and just people, mm-hmm. that there seems to be something to celebrate you that you really love for people to somehow come together yeah and go that's from disparate mm-hmm. places to mm-hmm. to really being buddies is that is that that fair? is so true of me yeah that yeah. is I love when my like a, a sentence I say a lot is I love when my friends become friends like we were just talking to another friend of ours who's yeah. going with us to Denver for Q yeah. and I immediately started thinking who I want to introduce him to yeah right like oh there's this youth pastor from Texas that's coming and I would love for him to meet him and there's and this guy from New York's gonna be there I want him to meet him you know like yeah. that's what I want to do mm-hmm. I love connecting people yeah. I am interviewing interns right now for our company and the two of them that just don't fit with us are yeah. all stars they just, we just don't have the right seat for them mm-hmm. I called other people and said I've got an intern for you I don't even know if you need interns this <laughs> summer but I've got your person right right and so that really is mm-hmm. in I like ma- making people feel like the connection they've made will improve their life yeah 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 that that I have brought someone to them maybe even not necessarily a um, shop around the corner to a Fox books, but yeah. bringing them both to each other and go, you, you actually are both going to be better yeah. off yeah. for this. There's not like a winner and a loser who's yeah. going to be ahead. 
So, yeah, that's really interesting. Because that's true of Tommy Boy, right? Like, yeah. The, he's yeah, exactly. an idiot. Yeah, and exactly. David Spade brings him back around. Same way with Baby Mama. She's a yeah. complete idiot. Yeah. Amy Poehler character, right? That's really interesting. I probably relate more with Tommy Boy and Amy Poehler <laughs> probably <laughs> than David Spade and Tina Fey. But, yeah, yeah that's really – because that really is a – as much as the teaching writing theme of my life, my other theme, another theme would be my fr- friendships and yeah. how much I like people and how much I want people to like people. 